America does breakfast better than anywhere else oh in the world. You Full can't stop. get like breakfast in Full Europe, stop. really. You can maybe get like crepes in France, no. but like everyone's like, have a cappuccino, eat a pastry, and shut up. Breakfast is the best meal of the day. All right, so Connor Ann has a super interesting story, a cautionary tale, if you will, from our recent uh, exploration of the world. Connor, why don't you take it away? Okay. This is a cautionary tale. So meeting planners, uh, we were just overseas at an industry event and heard a story from a meeting planner partner that I had to share. So you need to be careful who you refer your business to because they may end up stealing your business. Not good. So here's what happened. To protect the innocent, I'm going to change names. So my friend Stacy referred her incentive <laughs> client to a legacy business travel provider, and the client needed to end up booking air travel. Stacy, <laughs> love her, knew this legacy provider had been around for years and could do a good job. So the group of 350 passengers got booked. Everything seemed to go okay. And then 365 days later, the internal meetings and events team reached out to the company directly and ended up booking their big incentive trip for them. Not good. Stacy is now <laughs> in the wind. So she Hate lost out it. on business and a big chunk of that planner's revenue for the year. Lesson, just be careful who you pick as partners because this is actually not the first time I've heard this happen. And it's sad. So... Uh, I'll fly. I would never do that to you. <laughs> ah, look at the shameless plug. Yeah, no, I but mean, it's true. You, I mean, it's sad and it shouldn't happen at all in general. Yeah. And like there's maybe there was bad intent, maybe not. But a lot of these bigger companies like your agencias of the world, your Navans of the world, your Amexes of the world, they have internal meetings and events teams. And those meetings and events teams, they're always looking to get new clients. So when you walk someone there with a decent sized group, and now, you know, that group is in their CRM, they have a relationship with them. Yeah. It's only natural for them to reach out. So you just have to be really careful, especially as a third party planner, where a lot of these third party planners, like that 350 people who did the four day incentive and they knocked out, you know, a thousand to 1400 room nights that's a pretty big piece of business yeah. and you don't want to lose that as a third party planner. That's a lot of revenue. So you just have to be really careful. Um, and with the big legacy platforms, you have to really think twice about involving them in your partnerships and in your business. I actually had a call today. I had a demo with this nice man and he told me that he can't use them anymore because if you don't spend X amount of money, since they're just a giant company, they're not getting like any customer service help really either. So. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. Like they should have the most robust service team of all time, right? Like you can afford to pay all these people. Airfare is complicated as it is. So smaller teams, you know, small but mighty. It's totally real. If I were running a business and I had to give my business to any kind of like service-based provi provider, I do not want to be client number one of 8,000. I would rather be yeah. client one of 200, one of 300. I don't want to be client one of 10. That's too small, right? Yeah. But a, a business of like 25 to 100 people, like they really care and those accounts mean something. And when you go and you contract with these like big global providers, you just get thrown into the shuffle. And if your account is not huge, if you're not Apple, Google, Microsoft, and you're making that company millions of dollars a year, it's so, and you know, say you're an account that's going to net $10,000 or $50,000 to one of those big global TMCs, you're not interesting to, to those people, right? So you're getting the bottom of the barrel and, if I, if it were my business, I would look for like mid market TMCs that you matter to them and you can have a personal relationship. I think with those bigger companies, they get too big for their britches. They have weird like organizations and cost structures. Um, so they're expensive and, uh, yeah, you just have to really think twice. Do you have any mid-level, um, 
TMCs that you'd recommend? We may happen to work for one that does a very good job on the service side. We're working on the product side. Uh, but yeah, like for us, you know, we have sub 300 corporate accounts, so they all mean something, which is nice. Check out offline.io. <laughs> oh, look at the shameless plug no, as but, Ned no, but walks seriously. across the screen. But seriously, I will say that call that I had today with that super nice guy and you hopped on the call and he goes, you know, it's really cool to be able to meet the COO like in the middle of a day on a call where I could have just had it by myself. You know, he said that he yeah. was like, it's cool that I get to meet you and talk to you like this is nice. So that is there is something to that. Yeah. Little service goes a long way. So you guys, Kenneth and I just got back from Ireland. Top of the morning to you. And it was just exactly what I thought it was going to be. Do you feel the same way? Really? Did it meet your expectations? Because I've been, I've been to Dublin and I've been to the cliffs. Um, so I'm interested on your take. Was it, what did you think? And then how did it meet your expectations and where did it fall short? Okay. I thought the Guinness would taste different. It did. It was like very chocolate milky and I liked it. Mm. I could only have like one yeah, or two. I'm people who are like slamming 10 Guinnesses a night. I don't, I don't understand you, do it. but yeah. yeah, lots of potatoes. Um, I, lots of square I potatoes will never always presented potatoes in a polygon. The, 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 you know what? I like potatoes, but why Ireland? Do you have to present me the potato in a polygon form? Can I just yeah. have it like some other way? Why is it always in a square? It's so weird. For being a potato empire, the potato, what I needed them to be. That's my favorite thing to eat yeah. in the world in any form. And then I'm in Ireland of all places Potatoes and I great. can't get the potato I'm looking for. That was upsetting. <laughs> um, but I feel like another thing that upset me about Ireland was, what am I going to say? Was the. Ooh, the lack breakfast. of tequila in liquor stores. <laughs> oh, breakfast. Oh, okay. Everybody that knows me knows I have to eat breakfast. Okay. That's not in the gauche. She does get the cranky. The fact yeah, she that gets the cranky. breakfast was so weird is hard to come by. It was weird. And I don't ever want to be offered beans before noon again. Never. It's such a Europe thing. If you're just slamming beans on my plate with my bagel or my eggs, it's like, Ugh. eat these beans. It's like, dude, if I eat these beans right now, I'm, I'm going to be farting for I the know. rest of the day. This we'll is not good. Fart, but beans are a thing. I imagine oh, that that's would be true. Tough. Yeah. Don't fart or poop. Yeah. I forgot. My bad. Everybody knows. Uh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> everybody knows. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, the well, one of the weirder things for me about Ireland is usually when something bears the name of a country, it's going to yeah. be good. So me and Connor, uh, we had a free kind of morning afternoon and we went to uh, like kind of like an early lunch, late breakfast, call it brunch, if you will. <laughs> and I was expecting to have brunch food. And the only breakfast food that they had was this thing called the full Irish breakfast. Now it wasn't on the menu, which was interesting, but I was like, okay, the full Irish, it's probably good because it's like bears the name, the full Irish breakfast. No, it's not good. It's too weird. It's not the stuff that I want. And Ireland, it's a call. You should send out an RFP to some <laughs> design company or someone that rethinks the full Irish. And let's rework that thing because the full Irish is not it. America does breakfast better than anywhere else oh in the world. You can't stop. get like breakfast in full Europe, stop. really. You can maybe get like crepes in France, no. but like everyone's like, have a cappuccino, eat a pastry and shut up. Let me say what a full no breakfast is the best Irish the breakfast. Day. Here it goes: bacon, sausage, eggs, potatoes, beans, toast, or what they call soda bread, which is cool. Tomatoes, mushrooms, white or black pudding. The pudding threw me off, and some of those things, like you'll be like, oh, sausage, bacon. The sausage is not how you think. No. It's not. It's no. not the same. The bacon, okay, bacon is pretty similar, but the eggs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The eggs were not very good. And it's like eggs are, I made an, I made scramble eggs this morning that would have made Gordon Ramsay jealous. And I was like, if I can do it, why can't Ireland do it? <laughs> so cocky about your cooking. You are a good cook, but that would make Gordon Ramsay Thank jealous. You. You're like a dad. Thank okay. You. So I just want to explain for those who don't know what black pudding is. <laughs> mm. 
Tell, tell the people. Let me tell you. Black pudding is coagulated pig's blood. Why did you laugh? Because you don't think that's a word? No, no. It's just, I don't know. Go for it. <laughs> so weird. Okay. Coagulated pig's blood put into like sausage patty form. It's messed up. It's, it's like pig's good. blood jello. Ah, so upsetting. It's gross. Okay, just what else? Um, we went golfing. Golfing in Ireland is just as cool as it sounds, but it's windy AF. And I imagine that wasn't just that day. It's probably always like that. But we golfed on the coast, which is a whole other thing. It's probably windier than yeah, most. That's cool. Um, yeah, I don't want to like bore you with the intricacies of our our Ireland adventures, but overall, what would we rate it out of 10? 8.4. I think 8.4 is yeah. solid. It might be a touch too high. A little but too high. 7.8, 7.8, 7.2. It's nice though. Ireland's yeah. great. We we do like it. It's a lot of it's a lot of pubs. Like if 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 you want to go and drink somewhere, that's your spot. I mean, the drinks are good, the bar the bar scene's great, the live music scene is pretty good. There was someone that we just walked around and was on the street just singing his ass off. He was amazing. That guy. Unbelievable. So the live music scene in Dublin is very cool. Um, and Dublin as a country, it's nice. It's very easy to get to from the States too. It's very, very popular. So that, that's, a, that's also yeah. nice. Um, you got anything else you want to gab about? You got any hot goss? No, but you, no, but do you know what? As we start to talk about Dublin, I realized that we violated one of our first rules that we made when making the pod. So when we when we made mm. the pod, people were like, they would ask to come on the pod. And they would be like, I would love to tell you about my vacation. And we're like, okay, well, it's a travel podcast. It seems up our alley, right? We've cut a few of these episodes and we've never released them. We actually violated our own rule of no one cares about your vacation unless there's a crazy story that's like jaw dropping, eye opening. And then we just basically did a review of Dublin, which we broke our own rule. So the next time, if you did listen through that, thank you, number one. Next time that we talk about one of our trips, we'll tell you the crazy inside bananas stuff that went down. We will never bore you with a, a review of a place ever again. Thank you for that. That was our thank bad. You for that. that was our bad. Okay, something that was crazy was golfing and not having a cart girl or a turn or snacks or an Irish brewski in my hand. That was messed up. That was messed up. I've never paid over a hundred dollars for golf and there not be a cart girl. There was actually zero amenities. They were like, welcome to our pee golf in course. A bush. There's You're the first tee. Yeah. Pee, in, pee in the sticker bush. Mm -hmm. Um, at Super. your own risk, of course, there was a sign there, a beautiful sign. And, uh, yeah, there was nothing, no amenities. There was no car girl. There was no turn. There was no food. It was just like here, just for the next five hours, you're on your own and just walk around this field, try to hit the ball in the hole as few strokes as you can. And good luck. Okay. It was crazy. We're going to stop talking about Ireland right now at this moment, because you just said something. And I okay. realized we've never talked about this on the pod. Our favorite stand-up special of all time beautiful dogs beautiful, beautiful dogs. dogs by shane oh gillis. my gosh i'm <laughs> sure you guys know who shane gillis is but that special i've watched probably not even 10 stand-up specials in my life because i don't love watching them i love going but if i'm at home like i don't know i was dying laughing and i've seen it three times and i watched it for the first time a it's month so ago good. so each time his thing about doing about Trump's speech being the best speech in his history. That is the funniest bit. I think I've ever heard. If that's our like travel nerds recommendation. If you have nothing to watch these days, beautiful dogs by Shane Gillis. It's on Netflix. Is that right? God, it's, it's so funny. Beautiful. Can we get Beautiful Shane dogs. Gillis on the pod? I mean, he was just on SNL, right? I mean, he would do the Travel Nerds pod there. For sure. As right? long as I message him, <laughs> DM him through the Travel Nerds Instagram so he knows who we are, he'll definitely respond. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. For sure. All a few hundred thousand. I would have responded. <laughs> yeah. I totally would have totally <laughs> totally responded. It. He's like... Uh, 
Abu, don't cry, Abu. <laughs> okay, that's our rec. That's I, you know, this, uh, we're gonna do the same. I'll thing work on the that impression we're doing with the trip, where we're gonna start saying stuff, and no one knows what it means. Inside it's jokes. Boring. It's only interesting to us. So just go watch it. You will not be disappointed if you do watch it and it's your first time. Please do DM Travel Nerds and tell us what you thought because Chef's Kiss, funniest thing I've ever seen. That was good. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, what are you having for dinner? Ooh, uh, for dinner, I'm actually going with Factor. <laughs> I had eight Factors delivered to me, and I'm going out of town this weekend to Miami, so I need to eat them. So uh, whatever is in my fridge, I'm going to have a little I have like dinner. eight of them in my freezer right now. <laughs> I know. You don't have to freeze them. They're... <laughs> If Factor wants to sponsor us, it's a fantastic food service. Everything is proportioned out right. It's healthy. It's good. I've been on it. Lost a little weight trying trying to get in shape for Spain here. And uh, yeah, so Factor is how I'm uh, trying to accomplish that. That was such an ad read, Kenneth. I have Factor. Oh God, I, I like it? Factor. I'm not going to eat Factor if I can go a mile down the road and get bento takeout. Okay. That's just the truth. Oh, and that's what's God. happening tonight. Stop it. Factor is not going to sponsor us if you're like, you know what? It's totally great, but I have bento right down the road. Everyone loves bento. And that, that, it My bento good, right? rewards it account? Bad. It's huge. <gasps> huge. It's totally huge. But, <laughs> totally huge. I just, yeah, no, that's not a thing. That's not anything against Factor. I'm just, I'm a fat ass and I can't stop getting takeout instead of eating things at home. And when I do eat things at home, what do I have? Bologna. <laughs> bologna. Bologna. She did make me. She did make me a little sandy good, the right? other day. That you was liked pretty it. sick. It was the Hawaiian roll. I think I think you're on to If you guys want to eat my good. signature sandwich, <laughs> <laughs> go get the sweet Hawaiian rolls. All you need is mayonnaise, yellow mustard, bologna, sharp cheddar cheese. Obviously, like the regular bologna. Don't be weird. Don't like chicken bologna or all the weird stuff. No, just whatever. No, no. Go with the stuff it's that will kill you. It's a hot dog yeah. that is so bad for you in flat version is what you're going to need to buy. And then, yeah, just make yourself a little, a little bologna slider. There's nothing better than that. A little sandy situation. Slide that thing it in. It feels oh, yeah. like I'm in kindergarten when I eat them, which is, I think, why I love them so much. You know when you just eat like a basic... Yeah, when- like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you're like, I am no, seven 100%. now. It feels so good yeah. to eat kid food. When you sl- when you slid it over to me the other day, I was actually thinking that you were gonna, as a follow up, give me a chocolate milk. You carton, wish, and that would have made no. my day. Oh, you wish. I mean, I wish. You wish that would have made you like the cook of the decade. If you if you followed up a slider, the con special with a carton of chocolate milk all i can make is bologna sandwiches this is why i'm unmarried okay wait listen so i have something about chocolate milk that might be controversial ovaltine okay i've never like bought chocolate milk or had the sauce and then you made it i've only ever since i was a child my mom would only buy ovaltine do you know what that is yeah oh ovaltine's incredible i've had oh yeah that's the only kind of chocolate milk i've like ever really had and i have some oval team right now up in here oh go crush it go go okay i'm gonna go drink some oval team but you guys have a good day later nerds